Yes, hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. The flat is well and underway now, the Lincoln meeting taking place last weekend, but we've still got the National Hunt action there on the side. This week we've got Musselburgh to look forward to with some competitive handicaps up there, and we've got Haydock over the uh, jumps there as well. So looking forward to previewing that, we've obviously got the Grand National coming up as well before the flat season really does kick right into gear joined by an excellent panel this week a really strong panel we've got david jennings and graham robway from the racing post and from unibet we have ed nicholson ed you were away last week for the first uh flat preview of the season how are things are you looking forward to the flat it's a weird time of the year this yeah i, I tend to look forward to the flat when we're in the national hunt season and look forward to the national hunt season <laughs> when we're in the middle of the flat season so yeah, it's just great, this sport, isn't it? you always got something to look forward to. So, yeah, roll on. Kick on. Absolutely. Well, we've got seven races to get through, four from Musselburgh and three from Haydock. And then we'll get any other selections, which may include some from the Dubai World Cup night, as well as getting our best bets for the weekend. So we start off with the 150 at Musselburgh, which is the Royal Mile Handicap. This is over a mile. It's a class three event. And the betting of Unibet currently looks like this. Individualism is currently the six to four favourite. Ice Max is 130. Berkshire Nugget, nine to two. Johnny Ringo, 13 to two. Power of Zeus, seven to one. And Bills Bear is 15 to two. These prices are correct as of half past one on Thursday, the 28th of March. So they may have changed at the time of upload. Uh, David Jennings, I'm going to come to you because you were actually on this show last year for the Musper preview and you napped up Guido who ran on this card who won the race that we're not going on to now but the race we're going on to next but yeah you've got a, a good record on this card I think it was me and G-Rod actually on this Maybe. very panel last year we were fighting over that race and I was trying to convince him that Guido would win uh, and what's rare is wonderful because Guido did win and um, I like Musselburgh as a flat track I just like the I don't know I just think I, I think unless you're on the pace are relatively close to but I do think it's a tough track to come from behind on and uh, yeah I just like it as a, as a flat venue wouldn't be just as pushed on it as a jumps venue but I do like it as a flat venue and they've got a really good card they have indeed and who do you like in the opening race that we're previewing oh I'm a glutton for punishment I like individualism <clears throat> like you just go through his four stars like you know he was well touted up before he made his debut at air in July but he's ran four times. He's traded at 1.2, 1.6, 1.5, 3, and 2.5 and running. Like last time at Newmarket, if you stop the tape at halfway, you say, this horse is actually going to win. And it uh, looked a strong enough race that Zoom Zoom won. But I think with individualism, I think he was a big, raw, weak two-year-old. And I think it's probably only this season you're going to really see him coming into his own. Like He obviously is held in quite high regard, and I'd say... At no stage did they ever think he'd be rated 78. He comes in here this season off a of mark of 78. Look, he's already got an RPR of 80 on his on his uh, CV from air in September. I'd say this track will really suit him. And I just think he'll be that little bit stronger this season. I'd imagine Joe Fanning will be no nonsense. Get him either out in front or prominent and uh, off 78. I'd say they're thinking to themselves, we're going to get pretty close to three figures with this horse this season. Off 78. He should be very hard to beat. Okay, individualism for David Jennings. Uh, yeah, like TJ said, G Rod, you've got the um, the two year old form to go on here. We don't know how much these horses could have strengthened up over the winter going into their three year old campaigns. Who do you like in here? Oh, yeah, it's a very, very difficult race to start with, isn't it, Sam? I, I looked at it and I thought that um, it was between three, three individualism, Ice Max, and Berkshire Nugget, and they're the first three in the market. And then I had a quick look at the early betting and the, the ones that are shortening are the other three so mm. uh even the punters and the bookmakers don't seem to know what's going to win it it's one of those early season three-year-old races on the flat where anything could take a huge step forward and and there's just a huge amount of guesswork involved um i'll stick with my original uh, plan of backing one of the top three in the market but i'll go with the biggest price one of the lot because as I say, any of the three could really make the improvement that's needed. And Berkshire Nugget has had less less runs than uh, Ice Max and uh, Individualism. He comes in after only three starts. He was gelded after his last run at Chester when he showed a bit of promise. Um, Andrew Balding's got a fairly decent record um, at this time of year. He, certainly at last week's uh, Doncaster meeting, he usually has them uh, raring to go. Um, so I think that uh, it won't be lacking for fitness. And in a race where... Honestly, any of the six could win. I thought that he was the best bet out of the six, but nothing would surprise me in this one, Sam. 
Okay, a really tentative selection then from Graham Robway, Barkshin Nuggets, and Ed Nicholson to you. Kick us off with a winner. Yeah, first thing to say, these are really tricky races, aren't they? Three-year-old handicaps, anything could happen, as Graham's kind of indicated. Um, interesting that Andrew Baldy, I, I, I don't, didn't remember him having too many runners at Musselboro. When I checked up, he's only had three runners in the last five years at Musselboro. Uh, and he's got this and a, and, a, and a fancy later on. So interesting that he does go all the way up to, to Musselburgh this time around. And obviously those three-fourths, at least two of them, are, were pretty decent. But I'm going to go for a horse that no one's mentioned yet, which is probably a bad thing. Uh, but Johnny Ringo, who at least we know is fit, at least we know is in good form. The other horses haven't run as a three-year-old. Johnny Ringo has won at Newcastle. I watched the video, and I, and I must say, I was quite impressed by the way he won that day. He pulled a little bit always to the front, as has been his wont in his, his, his short career. Uh, and he quickened. And I thought he had a bit up his sleeve. I think the jockey took it fairly easy in the last half a third on. was always doing enough. Um, and if you go back to his runs last season, I mean, you could say as well handicapped. That's second to Molten Rock. He was given the Philly seven pounds at Redcar. And both Molten Mol Mol Rock then ran in a listed race, I think, at, at Newmarket. And the horses that finished there or thereabouts are rated 94 and and 86, one of them's won in, in Dubai this, this winter. So, I mean, you could argue that he's, he's, he's actually, well, handicapped on 82. Um, Paul Morellan, fantastic jockey at Mus Musselboro, has had the most number of rides at Musselboro over the last five years, 260 rides, 38 winners. No jockey has ridden more winners at Musselboro in that time. So I just thought I'd go for Johnny Ringo. I also noted he had been backed 12s initially, now down to sixes. Um, I just thought there's a lot to like about Johnny Ringo. The main reason, you know he's fit, you know he's shown his form, you know he's improving. Yeah, I'm also very sweet on Johnny Ringo. Um, I'll leave those clues to the end of the show. But um, yeah, Johnny Ringo, Fred Nicholson. Moving on to 225 then, which is the Silver Arrow Handicap, a Class 2 event over seven furlongs. Poet Master topping the market at Unibet 9-4. Northern Express 4-1. Guido, last year's winner, 9-2. Love de Vega is 7-1. Abduction and Zip are 10-1 and bigger about the rest of the field in here. Um, like I say, DJ was actually on Guido last year, but I'm going to go to Graham Robway actually with this because I'm going to see if he's going to need any comp uh, any convincing this year to back Guido. Is this the selection, G-Rod? Yeah, you had to bring it up, didn't you, Sam? <laughs> I remember this show last year. I was absolutely convinced that I'd made a very solid argument for why Guido wouldn't win. And DJ made a very solid argument for why he would win. And I ended up on the wrong end of it, didn't I, as is often the case when taking on DJ. But having thought that Guido had a good chance to repeat the victory and make it three wins in a row in the race earlier in the week. Uh, I've actually come down on uh, one against him, Northern uh, Express for um, Michael Dodds and Paul Mulrennan. I mean, he, he runs in this race every year, a bit like Guido. You know, he was behind Guido um, two years ago, beating half a length by him. He was behind him last year, beating four lengths. But he does really love this course. You know, he, he really goes well at Musselboro. It suits him. Michael Dodds has got his team in really, really good form. He goes well fresh, Northern Express. I'm, I'm banking on him reversing the places this time with Guido. Don't forget last year when Guido won, he had the really good Billy Lochnane on him, claiming... Oh, he was stealing seven or five at the time. This time he's got another claimer on him, William Pyle, who seems to get on quite well with him. But I don't think William Pyle's the next Billy Lochner. And so Northern Express this time to get his revenge. He deserves it. OK, Northern Express currently around four to one. Paul Morennan taking the ride there. And we were just discussing off air, I mean, myself and DJ, about William Pyle. And he has taken the ride on this horse plenty before. He actually finished third on this horse in the Air Gold Cup. Um, so, yeah, I'd have a little bit of confidence behind Guido once again. He's got a right chance. Ed Nicholson, to you next. Who do you like? Yeah, good race. Very good race. 23,000 to the winner, 0 105. I mean, my eye was taken to Poet Master. If you look at the video on the excellent racing post site, um, you'll see that this horse won really well last time. Uh, I think it was rated 92 that day. Got up to 100, so it does take a bit of a hike. We'll have to be at its absolute best. But I was taken by what Jockey Sam James said yesterday. One, six, sorry, that day, once again, taken from the Racing Post, the quote said that he'll have to go up into black type races. Well, he isn't. He's in a list. He's in a handicap. Um, the stable in good form. I think Carl Burt will have a great day at Musselboro uh, on Saturday. And I think Poet, uh, Poet Marshall will be the first winner of maybe maybe two or three. Um, 11 to 4 favourite, maybe a little bit short if you're looking for value. 
but the way he won last time, I was just taken by that. And the way that he powered home, um, beating a couple of horses that were due to take him on, but they're, they're not taking him on, I notice now, uh, at, the, uh, at the entry, at the declaration stage. So, yeah, my, my eye was taken to, to Poet Master. Three wins from four. He's won over the course, um, made him back in June last year. So we know that he goes on the track. Obviously, this is higher quality, so you take on better horses. And some of those horses against him are decent animals. But I just thought he's, he's up, upwardly mobile. Carl Burke's horses remain in good form. Solid chance. Yeah, certainly a four-year-old on the up, Poet Master. David Jennings, I just remember the, the words Billy the Kid being thrown around on this podcast last year. And that's that's what was happening with Guido. And like you said, off air, you've told me this horse is a right chance. But is he going to be your main selection? He's not, no. I do think he's a chance. Uh, I'm very much in, in Ed's camp here. I think if this race, Portmaster won at Doncaster in September, and just say for argument's sake, if this race was like the first week of October, I'd be thinking this horse is an absolute good thing. Uh, the problem here is that obviously he's had a long break. We don't know how much horses are going to improve from, from season to season. He's a four-year-old. He's a raw individual. Uh, but I have to say, I, I think he could be a star this season. That's a big claim to make now because, you know, he's only rated 100. But I do think the run that blew me away was in July. Uh, he beat Tango Man at Haydock. He made the run on that day under Sam James. And, you know, he was going nicely. And the, the field all came to him about a furlong and a half out. And then he just whoosh. He went away. When he got one flick from Sam, he went away. I really found some next time. I did this postcast and I really found some next time. And um, he was just too keen in the early stage. It was, a, it was a bit of a shock to the system. It was a 13-runner handicap. Mm. And I thought he was chucked in that day off a mark of 92. And then I kind of said, oh, no, maybe I've got this horse wrong. And I didn't back him when he won at Doncaster. But again, real strong traveller up in the van at Doncaster. And won by, whatever, the guts of three lengths. But was value for a bit more. To me, he just looks a grade above this level. He's in a 0 to 105. I've, I'd be very surprised if he spent a season in 0 to 105s. It's obviously the bit that kind of turns you off is this first run of the season, 195 days off. They've all basically come back from breaks apart from Love the Vega. But um, I think he could be a star poet master. And if he is a star, he'd want to be winning this off mark of 100. And Carl Burke, I think, has said there four winners from his last 13 or 14 runners. So, uh, yeah, I'd be very much in the poet master camp. I'd be very surprised if he started 11 to 4. I'd expect him to be closer to 6 to 4 and 11 to 4. Okay, yeah, Poet Master could shorten according to DJ. Moving on then to the 3 o'clock, which is the Scottish Sprint Cup handicap over five furlongs, where Silky Wilkie is the 11 4 favourite, Zarzini 7 2, Vintage Clarets 4 to 1, Fine Wine, well backed 13 to 2, Glorious Angel 17 to 2, Looking for Linda 9s, Princess Kareen 10s, and Be Proud is 16 to 1. Ed, to you first on this one, who wins this? Well, Carl Burke, as I said, has got uh, some strong runners at Musselburgh. He's got the favourite here, Silky Wilkie, who who won this race 12 months ago. But he hasn't um, hasn't won a race since uh, Silky Wilkie. I think he's gone 12 races unbeaten. But what that sorry beaten. But what that means is that the handicap mark has dropped to actually lower than it was 12 months ago. I think he races off 97 this time. He won off 99 uh, last year. Uh, obvious chances. But I, I'm actually going to go for the other Carl Burke runner. I'm going to go for Looking for Linda. You, you guys are not old enough, but that was a fantastic song in my youth, 1988. Hue and, Hue and Cry, Looking for Linda. Spelt differently, but uh, I remember that song very well. But Looking for Linda, it's got good form. The only thing that put me off is the going. I, I don't know if anyone's spoken about the going before, but um, it's down a soft. I looked at the weather forecast for the, for the race course. It's apparently going to be a lot of rain tomorrow morning. That's Friday morning. And then it's going to be sunny, but there's still 50% likely rain on Saturday so this horse wouldn't want it too soft looking for Linda um, that would be my only concern it is soft at the moment but uh, you know, looking for Linda's got some good form as a two year old um, as a four year old now but, but ran in class races it ran in the Newbury Super Sprint fourth six in the Malcolm um, definitely got chances um, on bits and bobs of form uh, and I just thought at nine to one ten to one worth chance with Carl Burt being in, in such in such good form but the ground is a little bit of a worry i would i'll be keeping my eye on that um, on saturday morning okay. looking for linda looks like the second string according to the betting for carl burke but got a right chance course and distance winner here uh, david jennings to you next carl burke but the other one i was going to say to ed never stop looking ed never stop looking um eh, sam won't get that obviously no um that's the song <laughs> uh i, I 
there's, there's two type of races I hate from a punting perspective. Ed is going to hate me for one of them. I, I love veterans chases, but as regards trying to find winners of veterans chasers, chases, I find extremely difficult. And sprint handicaps. Sprint handicaps to me are just a, night, a nightmare. And now this is different because you've only got the eight runners and usually it's a much bigger field. But like I just think with these, probably the six of them, I think, single figure price in the market. I'd say if you ran the race six days in a row, you'd probably get at least three or four different results. Um, and that's what always puts me off them. Look, Sarzini won the race two years ago and is a little bit of a hostage, hostage to fortune sometimes. Was drawn in one when he won it that day under Ben Curtis. Joe Fanning takes over here. Probably not terribly handicapped in the best of his form. You know, rate 82, went up £3 for just being beaten in Newcastle. So I would chance Sarzini, but I definitely won't be having a bet in it. OK, yeah, not one for having a bet in for David Jennings. But Graham Robway, are you a big fan of sprint handicaps? I do like them, yeah. Yeah, I love them. I, I, I miss them, actually, over the winter. I, I was at Cheltenham a couple of weeks ago, and I think I was the only person sitting there saying, oh, you know, give me a 20-runner sprint handicap at York any day of the week over, you know, watching Ballyburn saunter around or, or long odds on. So I can't wait for this one. Uh, certainly, we've only got eight in it, though, Sam. It's not 20 runners, is it? Um, the one to be on, I think, is Vintage Clarets, who was second in the race last year, and he saves all of his best form for soft ground. As Ed's already said, uh, there's quite a good chance that the conditions are going to be testing um, at Musselburgh, and I, I was looking closely at looking for Linda as well. But in the end, uh, the conditions just swayed me towards Vintage Clarets. He's got really, really good form on soft and heavy ground, and he was in great form towards the end of last season. If he can repeat the form where he finished third behind Abraham Gold last time out, I think he's got a really good chance. Richard Fahey's had two horses placed in this race in the last 10 years. Obviously, he was one of them last year. So I expect that it's a race that, that he targets. And um, you know, the market's latched on to him now because he's among the favourites, I think, vintage clarets. But I think rightly so, Sam. Yeah, he is indeed. And yeah, like you say, placed in the race last year. Now, the highlight on the card there at Musselburgh is the 335, which is the Queen's Cup Class 2 Heritage Handicap over one mile six furlongs. Chillingham's top in the market at 4 1. Sweet Fancy 9 2. Berkshire Rocco 6 1. Struth is 17 2. Hope You Can Run and Your Kindness are 10 1. 11 1 about Metier and 12 1 and bigger. The rest of the field. Ed Nicholson has got to be extra placed in here, haven't they? Yeah, extra place galore with uh, with Unibet. Uh, great races, isn't it? It's, one, it's probably their best race of the season, isn't it, Musselboro? Um, can't think of a bigger one, unless you guys can. Um, and I, I, I do like enjoy watching it. One mile six. They do go, they do go very quick around this very the very tight turns at Musselboro. Um, once again, I was looking at the going because um, my selection needs it soft. In fact, needs it heavy. Uh, so if the rain does come, um, I'm going to absolutely be lumping on Meteor. Uh, who came second in this race 12 months ago. Uh, interesting run. I watched that a couple of times uh, yesterday and, and felt a bit unlucky, actually. Didn't get a run, then was staying on the inside with Safi Osborne. Uh, always well up there, always travelling well, but just tap for toe, as you would expect, uh, of a horse that, you know, he's, he, over, over hurdles, he's, he's a stayer. On the flat, he's a stayer. He's won the Chester Cup, isn't he? Um, so one mile six, probably a reason why he got a little bit tap for toe and then ran on and finished second. His handicap mark has gone up, obviously. 101 now, I think it is, according to my notes. Yeah, 101. And he won the Chester Cup off uh, 97, came second off 94 here 12 months ago. So he's got it to do. But he had a nice pipe opener, if you can call it such, in the Imperial Cup um, in seventh. He's got some good form in grade one contests on the flat as well. Um, it, it's, you know, he's a good horse, isn't he? He is a good horse, but he does need that soft ground. So I'll be looking at, looking at the clouds, looking at weather. But if it does come up soft and it continues to rain, you won't get 11 to 1. It'll be, it'll be half those odds. Um, so, yeah, Meteor is my selection. OK, Meteor, last year's Chester Cup winner, Fred Nicholson. Uh, David Jennings, let's go to you again here. Um, I believe you're quite strong on one in this. I am, yeah. The ground is the thing that's put me off a little bit. I really like Struth for um, for Charlie Johnson and Joe Fanning. Um the thing about Struth is it won, he won first time out last year on soft ground at Chester, and it did get very, very deep at Chester. So I'm hoping he'll be all right in the conditions. Uh, I thought he did really well to get away with a £2 rise for just being nabbed just in the final stride in the November handicap. If you remember, the November handicap was switched from Doncaster um, to Newcastle. And um, it was one of them where Joe Fanning, I'd say, 
leave, he was caught close. Like he did everything right. The horse travelled, quickened, looked to have put the race to bed, and then you know one more. Uh, what a one smooth operator won the race and just came from the clouds and, and beat him. But um, I thought all season he was a look at them form figures. You know, there's twos, there's fours, there's another two, and you're kind of saying he's an early horse. But a little bit like individualism, who we spoke about earlier on. Um, I just wonder another season under his belt. We know he goes well fresh. He's a perfect drawn stall five. I think he's he's a real galloper. So I think he's over this mile six than he was over a mile and a half. And um, to me, he's just a perfect type that I want for this race. Uh, you know, the Johnsons always tend to kind of have one for this. Austrian school won it in 2019. And we obviously didn't have it in 2020 because of COVID. And then the Max We Can won it in 2021 as well. And they've had loads of place horses as well in it in the last decade. So I think they tend to you know, target some of their best kind of uh, staying handicap, handicap. Like he's been lingering in the kind of mid-90s all season. Uh, cheek pieces on. He probably thinks about it a little bit, but I, I, I think there is a big season in him. So I am with Shrute. Okay, Shrute for David Jennings then. Uh, Graham Robby, the final one to give a selection on the Queen's Cup. Who's that going to be? Uh, yeah, it's uh, Emin for me, Sam. Um, I think that again, he's one who really, really likes soft ground. Um, and he's got his conditions here. Last season, he ran in this race and he, he was given quite an enterprising ride. They sort of bombed off in front with him and he looked like he might go and make all the running. He just got tired towards the finish. But he went on and improved on that form later in the season. I mean, he was only beaten a length by Tashkan uh, at Chester and he's a really smart horse in conditions isn't he so he's quite a big old price and uh, Declan Carroll's got a really good record with his runners at Musselburgh so I expect a man a mean could go really well at double figure odds here okay 16 to 1 for Graham Rob by Ed Nixon it's worth mentioning just the offers once again we have extra places here but there are a super boost race that we did miss out in the 225 is that correct yeah, Super Boost 225 where we boost every horse in the race so whether you'll get the next price up on the price ladder um, and those are the two offers at Musselburgh. Plenty more to come at Haydock as well. But just, I was going to ask the form guys here what they what they make of Berkshire Rocco. Because I was, again, I noticed that he was coming up from Baldings Yard and he doesn't send many to Musselburgh. And looking at his back form, I mean, he came second in the ledger, which must have made him 160, 120 horse. He's now down to 96. But then I noticed how many seconds he's had. He's had seven seconds. Do we think he's a bit of a twicer? Yeah, he's only won, I think he's only won twice or three times there. Uh... I thought there was a couple of occasions that probably should have won. Now, he did get the, the, the job done. I don't think he won last season, did he? But he did win the season before, I think, at Sudwell. Um, and I remember one day he just about won at Ascot. But uh, he is he is one I'd be very scared of. I think he's well handicapped. And, yeah. you know, maybe a race like this is the time to catch him. And, uh, you know, I'd imagine he should cope with conditions. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see. And there we go, a handy preview of Musselburgh there then. We'll be back with a preview of the free races from Haydock on the ITV card shortly after this. Want betting on the horses to be anything but flat. With an app that impresses every time out. You're on. Want to watch live streaming of races in the UK, Ireland and around the globe? And get a chance to win even bigger with three uni boosts every day on any horses you want. Unibet, you're on. Welcome back to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet. We have had the flat action preview. We now move to the jumps action. Well, we start off with the 205 at Haydock, which is a handicap hurdle. It's the two-mile Hurdle Series final handicap and looking at the betting, Brentford Hope is the 85 to 40 favourite, Playful Saint 4 to 1, Mill Dam is 5 to 1, The Churchill Lad 13 to 2, Ballygiri 10 to 1, Mr Mackay 10 to 1, 12 to 1, and bigger the rest here. Ed Nicholson, to you first. I think we have an offer in this race. Yep, our uh, flagship offer, money back. Money back second or third as cash in this particular contest. Uh, good race, uh, competitive race. Uh, and one that I have a strong fancy for, though, uh, in Brentford Hope. Um, f once a former, well, horse that won on his debut at Newmarket. I, I guess you guys remember that all during the winter. He's been talked about as a Derby hopeful, but um, that went west. Uh, but he's now a decent hurdler. He's actually run 10 times over hurdles. I think he's had four wins, four seconds and a third or something like that. Um, and he does win on flat tracks. 
uh, and he does win really well when he when he does get his head in front. Um, Harry Durham does really well with this type of horse, and I just thought he had quite a lot in his favour. He, he runs well at the track, came six in the Swinton um, off 123. He is running off 140, and that's because he's been successful lately. Uh, he's won a heavy go going, which could be significant. The going is soft at the moment, but once again, there's more rain um, expected at Haydock. Uh, but he's also won on good to soft, so the soft going description at the moment would, would suit would suit him um, any softer would be okay as well um and i thought he had quite a lot quite a lot going for him he's run well this season second in the jerry field and one last time out improving horse good on flat tracks i thought he was a favorite to be shot at around about five to two eleven to four there you go. Okay, yeah, look, Brentford Oak, money back is cash, second or third in that race there. Do check the terms and conditions out for that one. Uh, David Jennings, the favourite. Is this a good favourite? Yeah, yeah, I think this just wins. Um, I think the key thing with Brentford Hope is flat track, you know, two miles. I don't think ground is as much of an issue. I know he was beaten by Spring Note at Newbury on bottomless ground, but he came out last time at Newcastle and it was even worse. And I thought he bolted up. But according to RPRs, it was his best ever performance. He got a mark of 140 for that. Um, he's just better than these, and he just he just wins. I thought. Okay, yeah, two votes for Brentford Hope. Could this be the postcast hat trick horse, Graham Rob White? No, not for me, uh, Sam. Sorry, let you down. And I, I, I can obviously see the angle. We've got a huge chance, hasn't he? Harry Derham's flying, and um, yeah, obviously got a great chance. Goes on soft ground, but um, I, I think. Um, I th- I'm loath to take on Dan Skelton at the moment. He's he's obviously going all out for that uh, first trainer's title, isn't he? He's giving Paul Nichols a real run for his money this year. And I think that he's got a real good chance here with Playful Saint, who was second behind Mildam, who also runs in this race, um, at Stratford uh, just 19 days ago. Uh, he was beating the neck, but he's got a one-pound put in the weights with Mildam. And that was his first run since he finished third in the Imperial Cup last year so i think you'll see playful saint improve plenty uh from that seasonal reappearance at stratford uh he's entitled to reverse the form anyway with the weight pull um and the way that dan skelton's horses are running at the moment i think it will take a good performance from uh brentford oak to lower his colors so sorry to let you down sam but i'm going against you all playful saint for me no hatchet course as of yet but playful saint for the skeletons going hammer and tongs try and win that first trainers Title. Let's move on then to the 240, which is a Stayers Hurdle Series final handicap hurdle. It's over three miles, but Astronomic View is stopping the market around four to one. Shoeshine Boy is nine to two. Gosh Al Posh is six to one. Domor Bay is six to one. Secret Tricks fifteen to two. Judicial Law eight to one. Tanganyika nine to one. Double figures. The rest of them. David Jennings, you can kick us off. Uh, judicial Law, uh, one hundred and thirty-two. Um, strikes me as still a well enough handicapped horse. Now, I didn't think he ran badly at all as uh, Newbury last time. He was beaten by Emma Tommy. He was banged there at the last. Big drifter that day. Um, hadn't ran since November. So he's obviously had problems in the thick of winter. And I just go back to that run in October. Um, second, the Highland off a mark of 130. Um, it looked to be a springboard for a real good, decent season. I was even thinking they might try and get him into the pretense final. They didn't go down that route. Or probably didn't qualify for it, that's why. But um I I would say he's got top weight, but he deserves to have it. Um he did qualify, of course, because he was second. Um but uh, in that qualifier behind Thailand. But um yeah, I just thought he was maybe a little bit better than his mark. And he's had it like some of these have had really tough seasons, like astronomic view seems thrown every day of the week. Uh judicial law, we've only seen him twice since October, once since November. I just wonder has this been a part of the plan? So yeah, judicial law for me, hoping class will prevail. Okay, judicial law eight to one for David Jennings. Graham Robway to you next. I fancy Domore Boy. Yeah, Sam, for uh, Emma Lavelle, who's starting to hit a bit of form uh, this season now and um, was was seventh in a competitive race at uh, Cheltenham two starts ago. Made quite a significant error at a crucial time. Just put, <coughs> put him out of the race, sorry. And um, last time out, uh, I thought was undone by a bit of a slow gallop at, um, at Plumpton behind all that I think is named after DJ. I love the nightlife. <laughs> Uh, was beaten into second behind him, stayed on really, really strongly. Looked as though he'd definitely be suited by a, a stronger gallop, and he's going to get that here, you would have thought, with 13 runners lining up, a far more competitive race, still lightly raced and open to plenty more improvement. So, yeah, Doughboy, uh, Doughboy, 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 Doughboy,
Bay. Oh, Don't More Bay, not Don't More Boy. There we go. Don't More Bay. Yeah, we've got a six to one currently. Couldn't have got that much more wrong if I tried. Oh, no, it's all right. Don't worry about it, Gerald. <laughs> uh, Ed Nixon, if the lads want to back these horses each way, there will be an extra place to them. Is that right? Yeah, extra place in this race. I mean, once again, it's another competitive race at Haydock. There's always seems to be the, these handicaps um, competitive. Yeah, so we're going extra place on this race. Um, I, I thought this was a good chance for Astronomic View to continue the form that he's shown um, of late. Been very consistent. Looking at um, RPR ratings, he was... He's been very consistent. One one five for about four races on the trot. Did a one two three last time. Uh, rated one two three. Won that race so easily over three mile two. I think the key to this horse has been the the, the step up in trip. This time last year, he was running over two miles. Um, and as he's gone up further, he's improved. Uh, I mean, Lucy Gardner on on this horse last time. Just I mean, they won easily. Horse did fall at the last, but he was he still had the measure of that that horse and, and, and could have won by double the distance he did. Um, so I think the ground will suit. I think if it's heavier, it won't matter. Um, it does get really attritional at Haydock, as we know, and these these will have to stay three mile hurdlers. Um, dropped back a little bit in trip, um, but he would have won at three miles at Warwick last time. Um, and he's, he's improving. I think he's really going extremely well at the moment. And, and I, think, uh, I think he may have been... Uh, I mean, although he's been running quite often, I can see them looking at this pot and thinking, hang on, it's worth going for. Uh, it's a big, big pot of £25,000 and uh, Astronomic View to be out of this world. OK, that's good from you, Ed. Astronomic View, 4-1, to one, very strong on that one there. We move on now to the 3.15, which is the £100,000 final of the Unibet Middle Distance Veterans Chase Series. Um, Ed, before I go to the betting, just worth mentioning, this is the first of the series that Unibet have sponsored and there will be no qualifiers for this race obviously but from future years there will have to be qualifiers yeah we've had to call it a finale instead of a final because apparently the BHE wouldn't allow us to call it a final although they changed the regulations we were going to have qualifiers but then they didn't want us to have qualifiers so uh, yeah it's a finale rather than a final because there are no qualifiers and apparently you can't have a race called a final if there are no qualifiers which is fair enough I suppose um, but yeah it's been a great series this first year Plenty of good horses, I think. Plenty of horses that we've followed over the years. Certainly, I've followed over the years. We've been running in these races. Um, and this race has really helped us uh, cement the race for future years. We've got this for a five-year deal. So, it's the first of uh, five years. Um, and this race is perfect. You know, Eight to 12 runners is what you're looking for. A handicap on ITV, five to one the field. And that ticks every one of those boxes. And full of horses that we've been following, well, I've been following for years. So, it's, it's lovely to see them. And they're, you know, they're going for a £52,000 price, these 10, 11 and 12 year olds. So, yeah, really looking forward to this race. What's going to win? I'm not too sure. Um, I must say we're going to go industry best price on every one of these horses as we sponsor it from nine o'clock on Saturday morning. So if you uh, if you fancy a bet on this race, I would strongly suggest you go to unibet.co.uk where we're back in the, the sponsorship of this with being industry best price on, on every horse. You won't get any better anywhere else at that particular time when you're placing a bet. Um, but what's going to win? Well, I've been a chap so the last two runs at Thor de Cerise has won, both over two mile three and a half, both on heavy ground, was gifted the race last time when his only two rivals fell, um, has gone up in the handicap slightly for those two runs, uh, now on 122, was um, was uh, 113 back then. But he's improving. Neil Mulholland knows how this horse has to race. I spoke to him at Chepstow. Needs a fast pace, needs to be held up. Will he get it here? Not too sure, probably, because there are a few three-mile horses here. Um, so they might go quick. Um, so I wouldn't put you off off that one. But I, I'm going to go for a horse that these races were made for. I'm going to go for Pink Legend, who is 10 years of age, has been a grand servant for Nisha Williams, top weight, 136. Now, I think that's quite an interesting rating because this season he was rated 142 and he's won a race and he's down to 136. The problem is, and the reason he's 136, he's run poorly the last three races. Um, so you've got to forgive him for three races. I can forgive him one or two because um, he was running in maybe better quality races, including the Cheltenham Festival last time. But the, it, it does come with a, a, a big worry that he's, he's, he's you know, losing his form. But on the ground, two and a half, Phoenicia Williams has already had a winner of these series. I just thought Pink Legion, I'd love him to win because it is what these races are all about. And around about 10 to 1, sporting each way bet for me. Pink, Pink Legion must, must say that Le Ligion is going for a £10,000 bonus as well. 
any horse that won a, a race previous to this race, if they win this race, they win another 10,000. So I've been speaking to Joe Tizard all season. And he's, um, he said that he was going to run this horse in as many of these races as possible uh, and try to nick another 10 grand in the final. So wouldn't put you off Joe Tizard's horse either. But it's a real, I just love this race. It's fantastic. There you go. Ed, Ed spun us through the whole field there. Um, may not be a need, but Graham Robway, you can give us a, a quick selection for the race. I fancy Dubai Days. Um, um, it's not often that, that you get horses who, who uh, are running in veterans chases who are still capable of producing their very best form. But I think that um, Dubai Days has proved on his last few starts that he certainly isn't regressing. Um, he's right back to his best he was very impressive last time out at air when he stormed home from a long way off the pace in a small field. He's only gone up three pound in the weights for winning that race, uh, Sam, Dubai days. He likes heavy ground and he just comes into the race at the absolute peak of his powers against a lot of horses who, as we know, the reason one of the reasons they're in the veterans scene is because a lot of them have, have sort of seen better days. I'm not sure that's true about Dubai days, and I'm hoping that uh, he might still be uh, at his peak when some of the rest are not. There'll be plenty of Dubai days on Saturday with the World Cup night coming as well. But 16 to 1 currently for the veterans. Uh, middle distance finale. I've got to get that right now, Ed. Um, and DJ, probably not worth me going for you for too long here because, like you said earlier, five furlong handicap sprints and veterans fine. Probably not the best for you. No, they're my two that I stay away from. The one thing I will say, uh, Ed mentioned Pink Legend there. Like, Pink Legend is obviously a legend and she's ran some terrific races throughout her career. But, like, she could actually do anything. I remember I was really sweetening her at, at Exeter in February. And I remember telling the lads that I was friends, I really fancy one at Exeter today. And she actually, not only, like, she embarrassed everybody that had anything to do with her, including me who tipped her. She actually just threw all the toys out of the pram after three fences and just said, do you know what? It's not a nice day. It's kind of raining. Don't fancy it. And she literally just stopped. It was unbelievable. And she's a habit of doing that. She has two ways of running, but she is a really well handicapped mare now. Like she ran in the mayor's chase at Cheltenham and she was third in it last year. She ran it this year. She was completely outclassed. That's fair enough. But she just has the potential of one three six. She is your typical in run and play. Because if she's bowling along and enjoying herself after, you know, a mile or so, she will win. So she'll either win or be pulled up. There is no in between with Pink Legend. And off 136, if she gets into a rhythm, she definitely has a chance. I can see where Ed is coming from. Listen to the passion of David Jennings there. He absolutely loves these races really at heart. Oh, yeah. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> Pink <laughs> Legend would be an attentive selection for David Jennings there. I mean, very tentative. That, yeah, very. Ever, I mean, when I mean, the you're words right, Pink you're Legend right, are attached, you can only ever be tentative. You're right, though. You, the horse will genuinely either be pulled up or will probably go really close. Oh, she's a nutter. She's an absolute nut job. Yeah. 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 Lovable nut job. You've got to take that risk with this horse here. So there we go. That is the preview of all of the ITV races. We're going to be back just shortly after this. We'll preview some of the other races elsewhere over the weekend. Then we'll get the weekend naps. Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post, sponsored by Unibet, Sam Hart, David Jennings, Graham Robway, and Unibet's Ed Nicholson taking you through the weekend action. We have got plenty of action on this weekend elsewhere. We've got Fairy House to look forward to, some grade ones there. We've also got the Dubai World Cup meeting, which looks to be superb. And it's Easter. Look, what more can you look forward to? It's uh, a cracking weekend of action. I'm going to start with you, Graham Robway. What have you got elsewhere? I'm going to try and take your, your Dubai Prince title off you here, Sam. I've got a couple that I fancy, I fancy on the on the card at Maidan. Um, uh, one of them is called Frost at Dawn, who won their last time out uh, for uh, William Knight. It was quite a shock winner that day. He beat Star of Mystery, who's actually favourite uh, for the race here, isn't he? Um, Star of Mystery looked all over the winner and then Frost of Dawn sort of came and, uh, well, I thought beat him quite comfortably. So I can't really understand uh, why Star of Mystery is is the bigger price, is the short price, sorry. I know that uh, obviously that was five and this is six, but um, it was a very, very 
a solid time that day and um I think that uh, it will confirm the form. And uh, I'm going to go take a chance in the World Cup as well. You know, I, I'm going to pretend that I'm some sort of, you know, dirt expert. I, I, I've been very this. impressed. I know. I've been very impressed with Kaburkan. You know, <laughs> his last two wins. The and Kazakh made that. He's absolutely bolted up, hasn't he? Doug Watson. Yeah. I mean, he was well on top there last time out. I mean, if he runs to that sort of form, then this thing, or whatever it's called, never heard of it. But apparently, you know, this is a good, this is a good old, but it needs loads of pace, doesn't it? But and it needs to, like, all the whole thing to crash, crash around it. I don't think that'll happen. I think a Burkana win, Sam. So there's two for you uh, to, to, to win at uh, Maidan on Saturday. Now tell me I'm wrong, Sam. Come on, you are the Dubai Prince. No, I don't know. This title has come from Dave Orton, of all people, to give me the title of Dubai Prince. But with with the Kazakh horse, Kaburkan, you, you, you're taking a little bit of risk on form. Yes, the performance has been good, but this horse previously, you know, has been running in Krasnodar over in Russia. Like, how much you can take from that, I really don't know. But yes, the horse has looked really, really impressive at Maidan. It would be some story for the, the Kazakh horse to go and win this, but the Japan, Japanese definitely have the edge in this race, but it's not a race I'll be betting, and I haven't got a strong theory in that one. I'll, I'll give a couple of selections in second, but DJ, I'll come to you. You're probably going to focus on Fairy House more than uh, Maidan this weekend, unless you uh, have any of the Irish runners that you're quite keen on out there in, in Dubai. Uh, no, I, I just have one in Dubai for you. Um, I thought Siskani was too big of a price in the in the stairs race. The what, Let me get the name of it. Is it the Dubai Gold Cup Dubai. Um, at 12.40? Um, like just robbed in the race last year to be beaten by Broom, travelled all over the winter and I just have a theory on these stairs in, in, in foreign countries I think Siskani is just a better horse in in um, in Dubai and in different countries then it, it's a different tempo, everything about the race are different and I just think Dubai really suits Siskani, uh, obviously comes into the race on the back of two wins and um, I thought he was well drawn in six. Uh, William Buick rides, and, and I, I, I thought he would take a lot of beating in that um, Dubai Gold Cup at twelve forty. I couldn't believe he was as big as six to one. I thought that was a cork in each way. But uh, at Fairy House, uh, first of the three day um, Easter meeting, and uh, yeah, so it's a really good card. Um, one that I really do like a lot is in the three fifty five. It's a horse trained by Tony Martin called Read to Return. A uh, big eye catcher at the November meeting at Cheltenham uh, when the jockey picked up a band. But he looks really well handicapped off Mark of 112, I thought, for Maxine O'Sullivan, who'd be one of the better riders in the race. Um, later on in the card as well, the uh, Rybo handicap hurdle is the, the kind of feature race. is worth the most money. I'll be fascinated to see if there's any support for Comfort Zone because I've got on the record to say as he's the best handicapped Irish hurdler in training, but we just haven't seen him. We never see him. He never runs. Uh, because he's picked up so many injuries, but uh, he gets in here off a mark of 132. Um, I'd say he has the guts of a stone to play around with, but so the market is going to be very, very informative here. If there was support for, for comfort zone in that 505, uh, I would be very interested in him. And then just a little bit earlier in the 430, it's the Novice Handicap Hurdle Series final. It's the return of plenty of kind of horses we saw at uh, Cheltenham. Built by Ballymore was a warm order for the Carl Cup and was uh, well beaten in the end. But I think Olympic Man is well handicapped here for Paul Town and William Mullins. Thought he won really nicely. At, um, at Nace before Cheltenham kind of went under the radar a little bit because it was just before Cheltenham but he looks like a horse that I think has a bright future so Olympic man in the 4.30 in the 5.05 as I said I thought um, w- uh, it was comfort zone and in the earlier race uh, read to return in the ladies national at 3.55 Damien my three at Ferry House there we go get those in your notebooks um, Ed Nicholson come to you before I spin for a few Dubai runners it's just great to uh, to see these good horses running so early in the season, isn't it? And no surprise with the prize money out there in Maidan. Five and a half million to the winner for the World Cup wow. and uh, 2.7 million for the Shima Classic. And you've got that's August po- That's Rodan. pocket money for you, Ed. We all know that. Pocket money. <laughs> I wish. Um, <laughs> August Rodan and Emily Upjohn uh, are out there. And um, I just, I mean, I really want to see August Rodan turn into, you know, super superstar. I mean, I know he's very good horse at the moment, rated one, two, uh, two, five, but this could be his season as a four year old. Uh, so I'm just going to take it on trust and not even on trust. Obviously he'll be fit for this type of race. Um, and he's not even favorite, you know, so, um, August rode down at five to two best horse in the race on ratings. I, I think it's worth, worth a little bit of a bet in the Shima classic four o'clock Maidan. 
Yeah, it's a cracking race, the Shima Classic. It really is. Um, I'll just quickly spin through uh, the Maidan card. I've, I've looked at it in God knows how much detail over the last week or so. But the opening race, the good old Finn Ma. I think Saudi Crown will take all the beating at the top of the market around even money. It's not a great price, but this horse here was third in the Saudi Cup last time out. Didn't get home over the trip, but dropping back to a mile, I think we'll see this horse bounce out. Hit the front, and I just don't think anything will catch it. Isolate was very good in this race last year, but it was much weaker than what it is this year. Saudi Crown's a four-year-old on the up, and Brad Cox's horse. I think he'll bounce out and win there. I think DJ's right. I think Siskini's very interesting in the Dubai Gold Cup. Definitely finds a lot more out in Dubai um, than in the UK, and it's never a great group to the uh, Dubai Gold Cup, so definitely worth taking a chance. I think Siskini's very good. I think Tower of London was very impressive at Riyadh last time out. It's got to prove that he can do it again. Worth making note of the UAE Derby that Aidan O'Brien actually sends Henry Adams to the UAE Derby, who was actually fourth behind City of Troy and then fourth behind Rosalian, who are two well-regarded 2,000 guineas types. He makes his debut on the dirt. I wouldn't be fancying the horse, but I'd definitely be watching this horse and seeing what plans Aidan has for him. And then the final selection comes in the race that G-Rod had a selection in, which is the Alquaz Sprint. Frost at Dawn is definitely one that I'll be keeping an eye on, a three-year-old for William Knight with Miguel Barcelona on board. A really decent price, this, at around 12 to 1. Um, set the track record, actually, over five furlongs last time out. But last year's winner, Dania, I think is a superb bet in here at around 11 to 1. Actually, probably the most unexposed horse in here over this trip because this horse had 19 runs, um, won the race last year, and hasn't been seen over this trip since that win last year. Um, I think the drop back to six furlongs, I think a strong pace will suit this horse down to a ground Drawn in seven, which just down the middle of the track will be ideal there at Maidan. And like I say, won the race last year. Jim Crowley takes the ride. So Dania would be one of the bets of the night on the card there. So it's a quick spin through. I didn't want to be rambling away for too long. Um, there we go. So we want to get the weekend naps now. Who the best bets are this weekend. Uh, Ed Nixon, I'll start with you. Who's going to be the best week, uh, best bet on the ITV card this weekend? Yeah, 240 Haydock. 9-2 uh, to two at time of recording for Astronomic View. Uh, lightly raced actually, only had eight hurdle races as one all been placed in all but one improving, uh, has improved for the step up in distance, the going will be perfect, won really well last time I think the gardeners can put it off and have a big win on ITV day with Astronomic View. Astronomic View in the 240 at Haydock, Graham Robway to you next Sorry, 225 at Musselboro, it's Northern Express to finally get his revenge on Guido <laughs> and my revenge on Guido for last year. So, fingers crossed, I think it's like third, fourth time lucky for him in the race. This is surely his year, Sam, the ground's right for him. Come on, Northern Express. Northern Express to Graham Robway then, I'll quickly put mine in the 150 at Musselboro. I only go with the horse that Ed was really keen on, Johnny Ringo here, like Ed said, was second twice as a two-year-old before then coming out and winning. I thought the Alice Haynes horse that beat this horse actually ran a really decent race in listed contests. I've got a feeling this horse is way better than Mark of 82. Um, his RPR is right up there with the top three in the betting here. So, like I say, any of these could probably go and win this. But I think Lucinda Russell's runner here could run a big race. Has been well supported. Paul Morenon takes the ride. He does, he's an excellent jockey there at Musselboro. And I think around about the 6-1 to one mark, Johnny Ringo will be my nap. And DJ to you? Uh, I don't think Rodders will be collecting on his nap because I think Pope Master will win that. So I advise people to take the 11 to 4 to ground as an issue. The only issue I think with Pope Master. Uh, but at a bigger price, there's some 9 to 1 available about Struth in that um, big race of 335 on Musselboro. I think he's going to have a cracking season in those staying handicaps this season. Hopefully starting here. So Struth in the 335 at Musselboro, 9 to 1. Look at the price of our naps this week. Struth. Can't believe it. What a, hey. what, a, what a great lucky 15 that could be this week. And these will all be boosted at the time of the upload of this video. So you can get all of our naps boosted at the time of upload. Um, I'm just going to quickly, how long have I got? I've got a couple of minutes. Ed Nixon, what are you up to this weekend? Easter weekend's here. Are you going racing? Are you spending time with the family? What's going on? Should be going to Haydock, but um, I'm not. <laughs> the, the, the trains are, are causing a nightmare so um, I've, I'm not going to go so I'm just going to watch it on TV OK, it would be ideal if we could send the super sub out there but unfortunately Brett Williams is actually out in Dubai so that lucky man's going to be picking up a, a decent suntan and come back with a, a lovely tan on his skin uh, David Jennings, you've probably got well you've got Fairy House to look forward to this weekend but I'm sure you've got a few Easter plans with the kids yeah, uh, it's on my doorstep ferry here, so might even tell Ethan to bring the kids. I think it's family fun there, there on a Sunday. 
Uh, yeah, sure. I presume we'll be we'll be entertaining the the children with Easter eggs and all that kind of malarkey. Uh, so they're off school this week, so they're hyper. Um, so um, yeah, it'll uh, Easter's always good fun, and it, it, Irish Grand National on Easter Monday uh, always uh, one of the highlights of the year. Absolutely. And Graham Rodway, where are you this week, and what are the plans? Yeah, yeah, my kids are just just finished school, so they're all at home now. They're enjoying themselves on the on Easter weekend. So um, I'm off on holiday for a little bit now, Sam. Uh, be spending a bit of time with them eating Easter eggs. I don't I don't need uh, much encouragement, as you can tell, to get involved in the the kids' Easter eggs. They're all sitting there. They they're just so tempting, you know. That I can just see each each one, and I I feel bad eating their Easter eggs, but. You know, they're probably better off in my stomach than theirs, aren't they? Gerard, so- I was having this conversation with somebody um, yesterday, right? If you are told, what's your favourite like food like? If you're getting a takeaway, what would you get? I'd probably get curry. Curry, right? If you were told for the rest of your life you had to give up either curries or chocolate, what would you give up? <laughs> I'd probably give up chocolate actually yeah, so would I. I I told somebody this yesterday and they were horrified they were like really? how could you give up chocolate I was like I couldn't give up like Indians or Chinese or something I'm, I'm, a, I'm a savoury man oh, well this postcast took a fair bit of a turn there at the you'll end. be a chocolate man Sam I'd say would you oh yeah no big fan big fan um well, there we go. That's the end of this week's postcast. Didn't expect it to end like that. Um, there are plenty of races this weekend all around the world. Just make sure that if you are having a bet, you do gamble responsibly. Do check out unibet.co.uk for all of the offers this weekend. More offers, especially on 9am Saturday morning. So do check the website out for those. Uh, thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment. And we'll see you again very soon.